Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm and this is video six. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about quizzes. So in the last video, we talked about assignments. We actually created an assignment called Online Scavenger Hunt. In this video, we are going to create a quiz. Now, there's a big difference between quizzes and assignments, and it may not be the same, the exact difference that you are thinking, okay? Assignments are for anything you want them to turn in, uh, such as like a, a, a Let's say you want them to build a website or you want them to work on a project together and you want them to create a presentation, you want them to you know, write a paper, that kind of stuff. If you want them to turn in a file or if you want them to fill out um, you know, something in class and hand it back to you, then you would use an assignment. Quizzes are for anything that has uh, you know, a series of questions and there are answers for those questions. So for example, this could be a test at the end of a unit. Great. Or it could be, let's watch this video and you will answer these questions while you're watching the video. Most teachers, and I don't know why I'm generalizing here, but let's say a lot of teachers I've, I've observed primarily use worksheets that look like, uh, let's find one, let's go to my Google Drive here. I don't really have too many of these examples because I don't really do this often, but I will show you kind of what I'm talking about. Alrighty. So let's say you have, okay, this apps assignment, right? Most teachers will create something like this at home. They'll say, all right, I'm going to create a, um, uh, a worksheet for students to fill out, right? So, you know, they will have to, let's see, what is this? This is something that I stole from another teacher. You know, sue me. We all do it. Um, so it's using the two following websites for the best apps of 2017. Select 10 apps that you would actually be interested in trying and tell me what, why you're interested in these particular apps. So then it gives you just a bunch of spots to list and then it says, now list 10 of your favorite apps and tell me why. How would you locate your apps? That kind of stuff. Some people would think, hey, this, this is an assignment. Let's actually give them this as an assignment. Uh, I, would, I would make this a quiz, okay? The way quizzes work in Canvas is different from assignments. So let's get into building a quiz. So I'm going to add a new quiz to my term one. I'm going to say quiz. I'm going to say new quiz. And I'm going to call it, uh, br, 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 br. let's call it apps assignment. Let's just do this one that I just had, assignment. Okay. And then, like I said in the last couple videos, if it's something graded, I always indent it by two. That way it's easy to see which assignments are graded and which areas are just learning material. So I'm going to click, click on the apps assignment and we're going to get into the quiz itself. Now, this is drastically different than assignments. Uh, you may see this and go, nope, this is too, uh -uh, I'm not going to do it. This is too stressful. I'm already confused. I'm out. Please don't, because this is one of the most powerful tools that you can use in Canvas, especially when you have students taking these courses at home and you're not sure what software they have available, right? If you want them to watch a video and answer questions about the video, you may not uh, they may not have the software you want them to use to answer those questions. With Canvas, with doing a Canvas quiz, everything is contained within Canvas, so you know you're not going to lose them to another website. They're going to stay in Canvas and actually answer these questions in Canvas. Plus, if you set up your quizzes the right way, Canvas will grade your quizzes for you. Okay, So that will cut down on your grading time significantly. All right. Let's take a look at what this is. So right up here at the top in this orange text, it says this quiz is unpublished. Only teachers can see the quiz until it is published. Great, thanks for letting me know, Canvas, I appreciate it. The quiz type, it is a graded quiz. It's worth zero points so far. It is assigned to my assignment group. Um, I am not gonna shuffle my answers. There is no time limit. They cannot attempt this more than once. They can always view their responses, and they always see the correct answer after they submit the quiz, and they do not get one question at a time. And down here we have our due date, we have which sections I want to apply this to, and we have 
uh, when this is available. I also have this preview button. I can click this and it will give me a preview of the quiz. Now, I haven't put anything in the quiz, so nothing's going to nothing is going to pop up. There's nothing here. So let's go back to keep editing the quiz and let's start adding some content to this quiz. Okay. So in here we have two tabs. We have details and we have questions. The details tab is where you put the instructions for your quiz, right? So use the following links to pick your favorite. I forgot what the wording was, but you, you get it. Um, so you put your quiz description in here. This is your description for the quiz. Um, again, you have all the same tools you have when building a page because this is essentially just a page at the top of your quiz. Down here we have options for the quiz. So we can say it's graded, it's a practice quiz, it's a survey, um, so we can set that up. You, yes, you can do surveys. Please don't ever let me catch you using Google Forms with Canvas. It's sloppy, it's gross, it's dumb, you don't need it. Canvas does way more than Google Forms will do for you, okay? You can see the analytics, you can export CV or uh, CSV files with all the responses, you can break it down. All the stuff you can do with Google Forms, you can do with Canvas quizzes, okay? Stop using Google Forms. It's clunky and it doesn't work very well with Canvas. Use Canvas for your surveys and for your quizzes. Okay, anyway, sorry, that's my soapbox. Okay, assignment group. So again, we're going to talk about assignment groups in another video uh, later on. In here we have our sync to Aspire. We can also choose to shuffle our answers. This is great, especially if you're doing a bunch of multiple guess questions and you give them four options and you want them to, you want the, the answers to shuffle so it's not quite obvious that every, you know, it's not quite obvious what the, what the answers are. I like shuffling answers. You can set a time limit, say you only get, you know, 50 minutes to complete the quiz or whatever. You can allow multiple attempts and you can keep the highest score or the latest score or an average of all of their attempts. So the, this is a pretty sophisticated tool. You can also set a limit to how many times they're allowed to attempt it. So you can say, you can do it five times and I'll take your highest score. You can let students see their quiz responses um, and their incorrect questions will be marked in student feedback. So you can let them see what they got right and what they didn't. You can also indicate, hey, I want them to be able to see it, but only after their final attempt in this block. So say they need to take it five times before they can see it. Um, that's a bit weird, but you can also say only once after each attempt. You can say, I want to let students see the correct answers, or you can turn that off completely. Um, you can choose show one question at a time. And you can also say, I want to lock these questions after they answer it. So if they answer the question, I don't want them to be able to come back and re-answer the question later, which is a bit tough. That's, uh, that's rough. <laughs> Um, you can require an access code, meaning you can create a password on this quiz and they have to come to you to get the password in order to take the quiz. This is for things like end of unit quizzes and you want them to take it at a specific time. And so maybe they come into class and you have the password written on the board and you say, all right, everybody sit down. This is the password. Type in the password and get started on the quiz, right? Maybe you don't want them taking it at home because you want to be able to watch them as they take it and make sure they're not, you know, looking up the answers on Google. So you lock it out by a password and say, hey, you can't take the quiz unless you have the password. Um, you can also filter IP addresses. Please don't, please, please don't do this. <laughs> um, if you start filtering by IP addresses, then that creates all kinds of problems because uh, I, I know some teachers, they want to say, hey, look, I've got my Chromebook cart and I want to look up the IP addresses for all the Chromebooks in the Chromebook cart and then filter out any IP address or only allow these IP addresses to take the quiz. It's too much work. And with DHCP and dynamic host or dynamic uh, addressing, uh, your IP address on your Chromebook may be different uh, if it gets removed from the network and then comes back. So don't do this. It's just a pain. Leave this option alone. Okay, and then in here we can, again, assign it to a specific group or specific students. 
We can change due dates here, or we can set a due date, set availabilities here. We can also click Add, meaning we can assign it to separate groups with separate due dates. So I can say I want first period to have this due, you know, on Monday, but I want, you know, second period B day to have it due on Tuesday, right? So you can set multiple due dates for different sections. Okay, that's all great, but how do we actually add questions? All right, so let's talk about questions. Up here in the Details tab, right next to it, you have a tab called Questions. And if you click on that, then you get Questions. Oh, yay. So questions uh, are essentially just add, adding questions to your quiz. I love using question groups because it allows me to group my questions together um, and, you know, create, so like, let's say uh, the cell. I don't know. I just tried to think of something biology related. Um, and I'm going to say pick one question and then I'm going to say create group. And so this question group is set to pick one or more questions that are available. So in here, I can add a question to this question group. And then I can start creating questions that are a part of this section in the quiz. So you can get into that. That's pretty fun. I'm not going to for this one. Let's just talk about how to create a new question. So I'm going to say new question. And in here I have some options. So I can label this as a question. I can say, you know, whatever. I can, this is the title of the question. I use all, I, I basically just keep all my questions. In here, this is the kind of question uh, that this question is. So for example, is this a multiple choice question? Is it true or false? Fill in the blank, fill in multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop down, matching, numerical answer, formula question, essay, text, file upload, oof, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so you probably know what all of these are already, um, so I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will cover uh, one or two things in here that might be a little bit confusing. Let's talk about multiple dropdowns. So when you click on a question type that is a little bit maybe iffy, uh, it will give you a description of what that question type is and tell you how to use it. So Enter your question specifying where each dropdown should go, then define possible answers for each dropdown with one correct question, answer per dropdown. So I can say something like, Mr. Storm is a huge, oh, hold on, huge fan of thing one in the brackets, right? And he loves to watch thing two, right? So I've just created thing one and, oh, I put a space there. They need, these need to be no spaces. So thing one and thing two. So what I want to do is show possible answers for thing one, and the correct answer is going to be Star Wars, but other possible answers can be things like, I don't know, the Spice Girls, right? So those are the two options for thing one. In thing two, he loves to watch, and I can say, Marvel movies. Down here I can say, Gilmore Girls. I actually like Gilmore Girls, so, you know, I can't pretend like I don't. Um, and then I can say, update question, and we can take a look at what that question looks like. So let's, um, uh, so I'm going to save it. Make sure you're saving after, your, after you make your questions because sometimes uh, you might make a great question and then back out of it without saving and then it causes problems later. You may lose questions that you're, that you're looking for. And it's taken a while to save for some reason. Mm, do I still have internet connection? I do. That's weird. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to go down here. Oh. That's why, because I, yeah. I had an option over there that I didn't select properly. All right, I'm going to preview my quiz so we can see what that multiple drop-down question looks like. Okay, so Mr. Storm is a huge fan of, ooh, the Spice Girls or Star Wars, right? And he loves to watch Marvel movies or Gilmore Girls, right? So that is what a multiple dropdown looks like. 
So that's just an example of one type of quiz. So I'm not going to submit this quiz. I want to keep editing. Let's add some more. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay. So uh, I'm going to add a new question. So again, really it's just you know picking the right kind of question. Let's say you do a multiple choice question and you say, uh, you know, who is the best teacher at UMA? And then in there you can uh, type correct answer, you know, the, the proper answers. So you'd put, you know, something like Mr. Storm and then, you know, uh, Mr. I don't know, whoever. Fart. <laughs> I put fart in there. Um, and then you can you can indicate, hey, this is the correct answer by clicking the arrow next to it. Or I can say, hey, no, that's actually the correct answer, right? So that's how you set which answer is correct um, and which answer is not correct. So that's multiple choice. Let's talk about, let's say, all right, so I'm going to update that question. Let's do another question, and let's do something a little bit different. Let's say I want, now, b these last two questions I created, I was able to indicate which answer was the correct answer, right? Which means when students take this quiz, they will automatically, their quiz will automatically be graded, right? But let's say I want them to answer in an essay format, like long form questions, long form answers, or I want them to upload files as answers to their, their quiz questions, which I have used before. Um, so let's say, let's do essay. And I can say something like, uh, tell me why Mr. Storm's class is fun. Right. And then they will get a text entry box. Notice that there's no options down here to indicate a correct answer. They will get a text entry box that they have to fill in um, whenever they're taking their quiz. So uh, let's say you're doing something like I have a video and I want students to watch the video and then I want them to answer questions as they go through the video. Well, some of those questions can be multiple choice. Some of those questions can be fill in the blanks. Some of those questions can be, uh, you know, essay questions they have to type in but they can sit there and watch the video and answer the questions on their screen, right? Um, you can even, look at this, super smart. You can even put the video in here, in their, uh, in their description, in their assignment description here, by linking to your Google Apps and picking the right video. And of course, this is going to take forever. <laughs> so let's say I want to go to... Let's go to video, and I'm going to go to classes, and I'm going to go to, let's say, computer programming. And let's just pick this and embed it. And so they can watch the video. So let's save this, and I'll show you how this can work. So they can watch the video while they're taking their quiz. So up here at the top, they can have the video up, and it can be playing. And they can be watching the video, and then whenever they find an answer, they go, ooh, cool, and they pause it, and they scroll down, and they find. Actually, this isn't set up properly for that. What I need to do is make it so that all the questions are on the same sheet or on the same page. So let's go to, ooh, let's turn off show one question at a time. And then let's save it and check it out and see what it looks like. So we can do preview. And now I can see that I have my video up here that I can watch. And then I have my questions down here that I can fill out as I'm watching the video, right? So this is the best, in my opinion, this is the best way to do any kind of worksheet or um, things like that. Because um, not only will your students at, at home be able to do this, uh, here in the Canvas environment, everything's here that they need. They don't have to go anywhere. Um, but your students in class can, can uh, take advantage of the fact that it's online and it's easy to access. And, um, you know, let's say a, a student misses class and you don't want to show the video again. Well, they can watch it at home on their own and fill out the questions on Canvas and turn it in. So anyway, so that's a, a, a quick description of, of uh, quizzes. 
So hopefully you can see by the last video and this video the difference between quizzes and assignments and why you would use them in different contexts. Um, I really, really hope people use more uh, quizzes because quizzes are really helpful. And again, they significantly cut down on your grading time. All right, so we are now officially over 20 minutes on this video, so I'm going to cut it here. Um, uh, in the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about uh, some other things that you can create as far as assignments goes. Plus, we're going to talk about settings and um, how to, uh, you know, link Aspire and Canvas and all that stuff. So I'll see you in the next couple of videos. See you later.